What is up Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some stories from r slash Mark Narration so we will title it under Reddit Stories. <laughs> and if you'd like to skip that initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's jump straight in to today's stories. Now I was scrolling down and there was a cross posted post from Shatora Dragon who said, Mark asked for tree lore stories. This is one of the best on Reddit. Bitch tries to destroy my orchard. I bankrupt her and get her house torn down. Hoo-hoo! Let's get involved. And the original story is from Gosta for Kleiner, I think. Sorry, this might get a little bit long. Well, let's start a few years in the past. My great grandparents planted an orchard. It is now at least 120 years old. My grandparents and my parents were really proud of the peach trees growing in it and did their best to keep them in good health and well. We always threw a big party when the peaches were ready to be harvested and invited all of our friends and neighbors to it. I love those parties. The neighbors on the property to the south of our orchard were particularly fond of our peaches. There were a bunch of fine old people and me and the old man, Sam, were pretty good friends. He taught me a lot about woodworking with hand tools only and we had some great evenings in his workshop and we finished many a good whiskies in there together. In return, he got a lot of fine peaches, marmalade, homemade peach liqueur, etc. Sadly, he died a good 10 years ago. Cancer is a real arsehole. His wife followed soon after. Many suspected it was of a broken heart. They had no kids, so all of their property was left to the state, except his tools and a whiskey collection, which he had gifted me a few weeks before he died. In comes Karen. The name speaks for itself. Haircut, attitude, bitchiness, the whole deal. She brought the property of my late neighbors. We hadn't had the kind of money to buy it at the time, as we had met some dire straits the years before and all our savings were gone. The first thing she did before she actually moved in was to go around making demands of the neighbors on the surrounding properties. When it was finally our turn to listen to her gibberish, she told us that we needed to remove half of the trees as the leaves were blowing on her property. We told her in a polite way that we won't comply to her demands as the orchard is a vital part of our family heritage, tradition, and life and has been there for at least 120 years. She was pretty pissed but did nothing for the time being. There were some things you need to know before I continue with the story. The workshop I mentioned before was situated right at the border of our property. It was a small timber frame building, at least 160 to 180 years old. The regulations in my state are pretty strict concerning old structures. Every structure over 100 years is protected and you need a special permission to tear it down. Failing to get this permission can lead to a hefty fine. To get the permission to build a new building, it has to be up to the code and you have to ask the surrounding neighbors and if they agree, you're good to go. Except there is one speciality in my country. You have to keep a certain distance to the border of the property to allow emergency services full access to the property. If one of these requirements isn't met, the building is illegal or at least only partially legal and can actually be ordered by the court to be torn down. This might come in handy later, <laughs> I wonder. So back to my Karen. After our first encounter with her, she did her best to pester the whole neighborhood. She got the neighbor's dog put down because he allegedly attacked her brat. It later turned out she faked the attack. The dog was the sweetest and most innocent dog you can imagine. A Bernese mountain dog, big but a real teddy bear. Anyways, she later got us to stop doing our annual peach parties as she called the police every time for various reasons. Noise complaints, we had a band playing there in the afternoon arson we lit a fire in a designated fire pit in the middle of our property she called the atf on us allegedly making moonshine my dad had a license to distill for our own consumption in short she was a real pain in the bum bum <laughs> and after three years we decided it wasn't worth it to deal with various officers and law enforcement agencies every time we threw the party and we decided to quit after she had reached this goal she resorted to pestering us to remove the orchard we didn't cave in and something started to get really fishy. Somehow the tires of our trucks got slashed, eggs got thrown on our farmhouse and our cat disappeared and serviced a few days later in pretty rough condition. It looked like somebody had tried to cut his tail off. Don't worry, he healed up completely but we actually couldn't prove that she did all that. Then came the day she made her biggest mistake. She had a company come in 
sort of secret operation and tear down the old woodworking workshop overnight. Two days later, they started building a big garage slash recreational center slash house right where the shop was. She missed one fine detail, which got pretty important later on. She didn't ask for our permission, nor for the neighbors. A short while later, the trees right next to her property started to get sick. The leaves turned brown in the middle of the summer and the branches started to die. We lost four of our trees before we figured out the cause. Somebody had driven long copper nails into them. We had a suspicion, but we couldn't prove it. So we put up some trail cameras, perfectly legal as it was on our own property. We caught her red handed. My dad confronted her, she apologized and my dad, being the way too nice guy he is, wanted to let her get off the hook, but not me. The nail she drove in our oldest tree was the final nail to her coffin. I started to investigate. I had some friends at the administration of our country and asked them to do some inquiries. Turned out she hasn't applied for permission to tear down the old shop, nor for permission to build a new building. I further did some inquiries on the borderline of our property. Turned out the old mark has vanished over time and her building was about three foot on our property. After I'd gathered all this information, I presented it to my parents. At first they were reluctant as they didn't want to start a neighborhood clash. But after I recalled all the things she did to us and our neighbors, they were in. So let the games begin. First, we called the authorities on her for tearing down a protected building and presented them with all the evidence we gathered. Then we called the building authorities on her for building a building without permission, not up to code. And not only didn't she keep the required distance to the property border, she also built on our property without our permission. Long story short, turned out the workshop hasn't only been protected because of its age, but also because it was a historical landmark, which played a vital role in a conflict back in the 1860s. She got sued for this and had to pay a fine of the equivalent of about $150,000. She further had to demolish her newly built building, costing an additional $50,000, got fined for this too, about $83,000, and had to rebuild the workshop on her own expense, which was another whopping $154,000. As it had to be period correct up to the smallest detail, means it had to be built with the correct materials, with hand tools only, and to the correct dimensions. As you can imagine, paying professionals to build quite a large timber frame building only by hand gets pretty expensive pretty fast. So all in all, it cost her an equivalent of $437,000 plus further expenses as lawyers, etc. This caused her to go bankrupt, so she had to sell the property in the end, which my parents bought by the way. Last I heard of her was that she moved back to the big city. Tree lo, tree lo. Tree, look, <laughs> I absolutely love nightmare neighbor stories. And I'm, some of it was really sad about the dog and stuff like that. And I'm incredibly sorry about that. But I love it when you get $400,000 and she went bankrupt. And now you can have your peach parties again and all that good stuff can continue. And I know it's not really relevant to this story, but, and I don't know how many people do these parties when the fruits come around. And I really love the idea of it, but it reminded me of a story a while back where someone had like, is it, they call them orange groves, orange orchards, something like that. And this boyfriend wanted to introduce his new girlfriend and it was the girlfriend's story. And she went round and it was like the first harvest of these oranges or something. And they was all stood in the back garden, all had an orange each, like some sort of cult, like, oh, the oranges. And then she told her she was the first one that had to take a bite and she went to peel it. And they was like, no, 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 you can't peel it. You've got to bite straight into the, straight through the skin. And it was like, what the fuck's this about? <laughs> anyway, I'm going off on one. Let's cover some comments here with Irish Brigid, who says that poor dog. I hate it when people are able to get away with that. Far too often, just accusing a dog, especially a large dog, of attacking is enough. That she ended up doing such childish acts of vengeance as egg in your house and trying to mutilate your cat isn't at all surprising after the previous shitstorm and tearing down a protected building that was also a landmark. My heart hurts reading this. Whatever company she got to do all that demolition and building illegally needs to face consequences too. Honestly surprised you didn't think to put cameras up before the tree started dying. What was with the parents being so reluctant anyway? They were already in a neighborhood clash. Time to fight back. I love your comments, Irish. Now we'll cover some of the comments from the actual post itself with I am Bear, who says, why would someone jam nails into perfectly fine trees? And says, 
Karens. Featherfall says it's not too late. You can get her on tree law too. Destroying mature trees can cost millions depending on the tree. That might make it up to nuclear revenge. Rex McRider says in quotes, paying professionals to build a quite a large timber frame building only by hand. And it says paying them, heck, even finding them. Even a very competent builder who uses modern methods and tools wouldn't know how to use tools from a hundred or more years ago. Nearly Pointless says, it is startling how many people move into rural areas and attempt to change everything to their vision versus just blending in and joining the community. She could have earned new friends and joined the parties. And one role from Kazakh696 who says, should have sued her for the trees too. Those are practically priceless. I would love to be involved in a little community like that, you know, getting involved with those peaches. I love peaches anyway, and they got the peach liqueur and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it sounds like a great time to me. And then to, you know, bring a community down like that is incredibly sad. So I'm glad she got that. Thank you so much for that story. That was absolutely amazing. And if you have more tree lore stories or spicy stories like that, don't forget to cross post them in our subreddit because I would love to cover those as well. Now I've got a little story of my own, which is sort of kind of nightmare neighbors or just about the area that I used to live in when I was younger. I talked about it a lot on this channel. I hope you guys don't mind. So I've titled this story called Jack and the Wasp Nest. <laughs> Me here. If you've been on this channel for a certain period of time, you would have heard my stories from around the area where I used to live growing up. It was a council estate with a whole range of different people and cultures. And I will just expand on that. And it was absolutely a wonderful area to grow up in. It was like, it was one of those areas where everyone would leave their doors open. It was just like full of children my age. And, you know, you could go in and out people's houses and everyone was welcoming. It was just absolutely amazing. Anyway, continued. I wouldn't say we were a poor family as my family gave me everything I ever needed and wouldn't change it for the world. But there certainly were poor families on the estate. Anyway. What I'm getting is there's a whole range of people and stories to come from the area. I have so many. Today, we're talking about Jack, obviously a fake name. There's many a story about Jack, but today we're talking about the wasp nest incident. But before we get into it, let's talk about Jack. Jack was around the same age as me, so we're talking 11 or 12 around the time of this story. He was also known as a bit of a strange guy for various reasons, which we'll cover in the future. <laughs> but as a close-knit community, we didn't discriminate and welcomed anyone in as long as they didn't wrong us. It's sad, but looking back, I think Jack knew he didn't really fit in and would try extra hard to impress people around him, which wasn't always wise. This story in particular is one of those reasons. This particular day, there was around seven of us playing a game that I called Streets of Rage. Yes, the same for the Mega Drive computer game. Yes, it was based on the old Mega Drive computer game in which you battle various bad guys and bosses. Think of a shit version of live Dungeons and Dragons where I was the dungeon master. I'd create characters and a story and would actually battle hand to hand and eventually they would kill me, not really, and earn loot to use in a shop. I had a pretty wild imagination back then and would often be the one to make up games, which I would basically steal the ideas from computer games. Anyway, I just waffled on about something that has no relevance to the actual real story. So I even do that in text format. Whilst playing, we spotted a wasp nest hanging from a low branch, about five feet from the floor. This thing, and it was big, it was huge, like double the size of a football. I'm not sure if that's big for wasp nest, but it looked big. Of course, being idiots, we dabbled with the idea of disturbing it to see what would happen, but having watched one too many cartoons and seeing swarms, we eventually decided against it, apart from Jack. Later that day, we were messing around in front of our houses, and I can't recall the exact game we were playing. It was probably something like football or something like that, 40-40, which is basically like a glorified version of hide and seek. When excitedly, Jack comes charging around the corner shouting, I got it, I got it. Cue everyone looking confused at Jack. As Jack went quiet, a loud buzzing could be heard from the black garbage sack in his hands. As confusion then turned to panic, as instantly we realized Jack had the fucking nest in a black sack. As some people were shouting at him, others were shouting their mums. I stood there confused as I stood directly outside my front gate. Then he threw the sack behind him and ran. The sack wasn't tied, so chaos ensued. Wasps were swarming around the sack, kids were charging and parents shouting, get bloody inside, now. <laughs> By this time, I'd run 100 meters down the road, but I wasn't having anything to do with that. Jack had gone home. 
Cheers for that, Jack. And some responsible person had already called the local council to deal with it. The wasps didn't leave the sack until the nest was collected. And although I'm not a fan of wasps, I did feel a bit bad for them. It was pretty anticlimactic after this. Parents wondering what the hell just happened. The same with us. Jack was at home eating his dinner like nothing happened. Thanks, Jack. You're welcome. And as I said, it's not the wildest story out there, but it is just one from my childhood. And I have a many story about Jack, about what he does. Crayfish incident, the one with the barrel where he rolled upside down in the river. The one where he jumped out the back of a van straight onto a car that was driving behind him and landed on the windscreen. Bit of a sad story that one was, but and I wasn't there. But yeah, the guy is something and i do feel sorry for him and i hope he's doing well in life i haven't ever heard from him ever since but anyway there is no comments on this story sadly <laughs> so we'll move on to another one and our next story comes from lemon lime Ardvark. nightmare neighbors meet petty revenge i'm calling this petty revenge because no one really got hurt and the nightmare neighbors that folks were getting revenge on were in more or less danger than everyone else at the time but it was still pretty epic I'll leave it for you all to decide if you think it deserves high revenge status. I only wish I had been there in person for the final act. This story took place when I was in college, some 20 mumbly years ago. My sister and I still live with our dad and we were renting a house in town. We lived at the time in Missouri. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sure you'll get on my back if I didn't. I don't remember that much about it really. Other than there was a flowering tree of some kind in the front yard, a lilac perhaps. After we were there for a year or two, some new neighbors moved in. Two or three, or maybe more, college boys moved into the house that I assumed mummies and daddies were paying for. I would have been fine except for the partying. The always loud, always late at night, often very drunken partying. Drunken as evidenced by the mountain of empty containers that would be out on their curb the next morning. Now, I'm not a prude. If folks like to get their booze on now and then, fine. If they like to socialize, fine. But if you're whooping it up at full volume at 11 p.m. when you have neighbors nearby and I have to get up at 7 a.m. and carry a full college load and my bedroom in the corner of the house that's closest to your party spot, not cool, bros. Not cool. I went out in my pajamas to ask them to keep it down. Dad went out and asked them to keep it down. I can only imagine they heard from other neighbors as well. Nothing really happened or they were quiet. It was only for a short time before they were all howling again. We started calling the police non-emergency number. They listened a little better to police, not much, but a little, and they weren't happy. The flowering tree in the front yard gradually began to die. I assumed they dumped booze on it or used it as a toilet during their parties or something as payback. They didn't go full on vandal, but I also know that the tree didn't die on its own. Is this another tree law story? Fast forward several months, fill in the blanks however you like. They were still jerks. They were still loud. The police eventually cleared us to call 911 instead of the non-emergency line. I imagine other neighbors were granted similar privileges. Anyway, we're fast forwarding. Now it's summer vacation and I was off in California to visit my then boyfriend, now husband, so I wasn't there for the coup de grace. I only know from my dad's telling of events. One day there was a tornado warning. My dad and many other neighbors in what I can only assume is a bizarre Midwest ritual walked out to the ends of their driveways to look up at the sky. One of the loud party boys came out too, frantically looking from neighbor to neighbor asking, does anyone have a basement? Can we come over and use your basement? We don't have a basement. Does anyone have a basement? My dad said it was if everyone had agreed to the choreography beforehand. Without a word, dad and all the neighbors in unison turned on the heels and silently walked back to their various houses. While party boy is panicked and screaming, I'm serious, man. We don't have a basement. We didn't either. No one in that neighborhood did. Something about flooding and the water table being too high. Party boys didn't know that. They moved out shortly thereafter. I can't for the life of me think why. I like at the end there when they all turn around silently and walk back. I can just picture the scene, you know, the road down the middle and everyone's house is lined up and everyone at the end of the driveway is just slowly turning like some sort of cult and walking back while this guy's just in the middle on his knees screaming, no! <laughs> Thank you so much for that story. I absolutely love that lemon. And let's have one more story. I am loving a Nightmare Neighbor story. You know that. And this one's from Crack Girl 124 titled The Neighbor with this chicken murdering dog. 
And I think you know where this one's going to go. So if you want to skip this one, this is up to you, but it'll probably be the last story anyway. So I have this neighbor who is the full on definition of a nightmare neighbor, who I will call Joe for the sake of this story. And the graves in my backyard from my chicken is full proof of it. He killed the chickens once before, and here's the story in case you're interested. And then there's a link which you can go to to see that story. Around two years ago, I had a new flock of chickens after Joe's dog killed my previous ones. We had a dozen chickens and they were such angels. Even our Polish chickens were their funky hairdos. They had just barely started laying eggs after months of raising them and watching them grow into wonderful birds they were. My nana even bought me two more chicks because one named Tiny sadly passed away and they were bantams, so they were very small chickens. A while later, my dad's friend asked us if we could watch over their two chickens since they didn't have room for them anymore. And we happily agreed since we love watching our flock grow. So after all this, we had a flock of 13. We sadly had to get rid of three since they were roosters. It was another Sunday and my family were just getting ready for church when my dad asked me to quickly check on the chickens before we left <clears throat> and I did so. I ran out and my heart stopped when I saw what I saw. Joe's dog had gone into the backyard and slaughtered all of our chickens, all of them, again for the second time. Their bodies were stiff, so most likely he killed them in the middle of the night. I screamed and ran back into the house, telling my dad what happened and he went nuts. He called animal control, he ran into the front yard to confront Joe. Joe made excuse after excuse. I was gonna sell the dog so it's not technically my dog. The other dogs were in heat, they're just chickens. And when animal control finally arrived, they took the dog away finally because it was the second offense. Joe continued to complain to my dad how it was his dog and what about our other neighbor's dogs. But the security cameras that our other neighbor had showed his dog digging under two fences to get into our house. A couple of days later after this incident, my dad went over to discuss when Joe was going to pay my family the compensation for this group of chickens that his dog had slaughtered. Joe immediately started talking about how he can afford any of it right now because he just bought his wife a new truck and his son more games for his PS4. My dad wasn't having any of that though and told him that if it was his dog, he would sell the game, sell the truck and do anything he could to make up the money since the chickens are pets, just like any other dog or animal. My dad has tried to press charges, but the legal system here is garbage. Like for Pete's sake, the only reason animal control took the dog away was because it was the second time offense. Joe has tried to repay us once by trying to give my family chickens, but we're on vacation at the time, so he kept the chickens and realized how useful they are. I know he still has them because I was taking care of the good neighbor's pets. I could see a chicken chilling in Joe's yard. He still hasn't paid us back. He still hasn't acknowledged that he did anything wrong, and he still hasn't acknowledged that he needs to take responsibility for his dog's actions. Holy moly, I can't imagine having to see that. It must be absolutely awful. I'm sorry for the loss of all these chickens that's died because of that dog and that irresponsible neighbor. But I've got to say, there's got to be, you know, small claims court or something similar. We have small claims court in the UK and I'm sure you guys do in the US. I'm, I'm assuming this is the US where surely you can just set up that date and take them to court with the evidence that you have. If you can see the dog literally digging into your garden, you have hard proof of that, right? What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts on today's Nightmare Neighbor stories and tree law, tree law. <laughs> and let me know if you have one of your own. Come join us on r slash Mark Narrations. Share your stories there and get involved in the community. Love to have you. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending 20 minutes or so of your time here today. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. <laughs>